Hello everyone, I'm Norman Walberger. We're learning how to play Go and looking at some opening patterns in the corners primarily that are important for beginners to become familiar with. So now we're going to be looking at the 3-4 point, which is uh, this, uh, this initial play by Black and its response at the 5-3 point by White. So this is a low approach to this stone. Uh, in the previous video we looked at the high approach. The variations with this pattern, which are more common, are very numerous and historically you know, run to uh, hundreds and hundreds of, of patterns that have been well studied for centuries. Interestingly, with the advent of the AI machines in the last 10 years or so, um, approaches to opening play have shifted quite dramatically. Uh, because the bots play differently than humans are used to. And so they have taught us a lot about things. And it's probably safe to say that the large variety of complex Joseki or opening plays that used to be uh, sort of well studied has diminished in importance because the bots just generally don't play these things. So that's a, kind of an interesting aspect. But nevertheless, the ones I'm going to show you are all... Uh, simple patterns. Uh, they're ones that you're going to find in games. They're ones that you can play. So they're sort of safe um, safe patterns to, to understand. Okay, so it's black to play here. Black is responding to white's um, approach move. Okay, so the first move I'm going to look at is this one here. Uh, the meaning of this move is very clear. It's to prevent white from moving into the corner territory, therefore basically claiming the corner territory. Now, this is, from white's point of view, called an attachment. So this white stone has been attached by black. And it's a general rule of thumb that when you are attached like this, you should extend. You should extend straight out either in this direction or sometimes in this direction. In this case, always in this direction here. So this is a standard, almost automatic response to this attachment of black. And now black, of course, will want to move out in this direction to not be enclosed and confined to a small and insignificant life in the corner. So this is a reasonable move, which is a solid um, shape. Now black has a lot of security. Black has some territory in the the corner, um, but maybe not so much central influence and not such a big influence on the side. To finish the pattern, white needs to make an extension, and we've seen before that with a wall of two, white is um, in his rights to extend out here, to jump three spaces. Now another possibility here is to play the high extension. This is also a good move. Okay, so both of these are, are valid and it perhaps depends on um, the position elsewhere. If white has a, a low stone over here, like on the third line, then this is more likely uh, the case. If um, there's no other stones, then this would be more usual. It provides a more of a safe base for, for white. You might ask, what would happen if uh, after white uh, extends, what happens if black's a little bit uh, greedier and, and plays out here? Can he do that? Well, yes, that's certainly a possible move. Um, but this connection here is a little bit uh, thinner, especially given the fact that these two strong stones are, are very close here. Okay? So white can at any time play here, threatening to disconnect. And well, the safest thing for black to do is just to try to connect underneath and white will extend back here. But now black is, is obliged to, to finish this connection because if black doesn't play, then white will play here. Black will have to come back here to protect that stone and then white will connect here. Then the entire corner group will have been closed off. So then black will play like this. Now, this is not a, 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 such an attractive uh, exchange for black because black has now been pressed into a low position. Um, white still has some forcing moves against the corner, and maybe a little bit of uh, potential to, to look at this move here to cause trouble. And uh, I think this is generally considered favorable for white. And so 
because of that, um, black would play uh, prefer to play here. Now, uh, another thing that white could do under other circumstances is, is to play some kind of move if black played this two-point extension, to make a, a sort of a, a forcing move from on top, making it easy for black to, to connect, but giving the white position more strength towards the side. Now with this additional stone as sort of part of his wall, white might be um, able to extend a little bit further than otherwise, okay? because this stone is actually helping to sort of uh, protect this territory here. So this is another way that white might exploit um, this relative weakness of, of a, this big jump here. And that's why, generally speaking, uh, black will prefer to just play solidly and uh, securely, thereby uh, decreasing the number of forcing moves that white has. So then we, let's say we'll white play over here. Okay, so that's a, uh, that's a, a, a quite a decent pattern. Okay, now let's have a look at something else. So let's uh, go over here. Let's say, uh, let's let's do it like this. Okay, so suppose um, black plays here and, and white also plays this uh, low approaching move on, on here. Now, in this case here, <clears throat> white is extending from this position. So we'll, we'll pretend this is part of the game. And so we'll take the the whole board into consideration in planning out the thinking of the players. So black is reluctant to do the same thing that he did on this side because then these two strong positions um, that white will form here will really give him a potential for making a very large uh, territory uh, on the side here. This, this could easily grow to be a really big thing, okay, which would much dwarf the relatively small corner territories that black would would occupy. So black is going to be concerned with this. So one way of reducing the, the impact of that is to, to play slowly but surely towards the center with this diagonal play. Now this is perhaps used to be thought of as a slow move, but I think now it's considered to be quite a, quite a strong move, although it's been played for a, a, long, a long time. But it, uh, it prevents actually white from playing here. So if black plays somewhere else entirely, um, then it's possible, so for example, suppose that uh, black plays over here. If white then plays here, this is a, a painful thing for black because then black has to sort of crawl to, to make some life here um, and maybe can jump out. But you can see these stones that white is playing, it really helps to um, make a, a rather big territory here. So uh, what, let's say white does something like this, you know, now it's starting to, to look like a, uh, a potentially vast <laughs> expanse of territory, which black would not like. Okay, so um, black generally does not want to allow white to play this um, shoulder hit, sometimes it's called a uh, sort of capping play. And uh, and so black is actually happy to play that crucial point himself. Now, white will probably in this case uh, also make an extension on this side. This actually works very nicely with this stone here in conjunction with that. So white is quite happy to have staked out this position, but it's not on the on the huge scale that we just saw before. And now it's uh, reasonable for black to. Um, to make an extension over here to, to form a base and to, to make some territory. And black could play here or, or here, and, or maybe in certain circumstances even uh, out as far as here. But let's say because we're beginners, something like this. Now it is true that white could potentially sort of invade here, although we probably be reluctant to do so at this stage. But black is not overly concerned because if black, um, even if white is able to invade here, black is still able to um, take the corner territory. So let's have white play somewhere else. Um, black can play this move here at some stage, at which point white will probably respond. Remember, this is an attachment, just like over here, so white might respond here. In this case, actually, white might play down here also. 
But because white has a position here, he probably doesn't mind playing here. And so this is a way for black to um, to uh, take more or less the territory and, and, and provide himself a base. And if he really needs to, then he can um, go over here like this, something like this, to establish really a firm territory. All right, good. So um, let's suppose that uh, black has played, what did we say, um, maybe over here. Okay, and this is then a, a reasonable exchange um, that is, is balanced. Now I want to show you a variant on that. So instead of uh, this move here, another possibility for black to play, sort of something similar, is to uh, play this move. Okay, it has the same kind of intention. We're moving out towards the center and towards the side, but it's a little bit less tight. Um, so it allows white, for example, to, to play uh, something like this a little bit more effectively. So white could play here, and this is another kind of standard play, and then maybe white plays here to make it a nice shape, and then black make, makes an extension, and then maybe white uh, uh, makes an extension. Okay, let's say this, all right? So this uh, jump here pays less attention to the corner territory, but is more oriented towards the side. White can still just make an extension, and then black can make uh, an extension like this, and this is also a nice pattern. And later on, both parties will be looking to, to um, slide into the corner. If it's white's turn, uh, white would, would like to play this move. That's a nice shape to, to slide into the corner. Um, but it's at this stage in the game, this would be too early. It would be more important to play in one of the empty corners. So white would not play this. But later in the game, when the territories are becoming more defined, this would be a big end game play for, for white. And we've already seen that if it's black's turn to play, uh, let's have white over here, then uh, black can close the territory by playing this which case white will almost surely respond like this. And now black has a bit of a weakness here, so black might actually in this case be, be tempted to, to fix that weakness by playing here. Okay. Um, this, this stone here is threatening to attach here, and, and there's a possibility that white will be able to scoop out this territory if, if black is not um, sure. And in, for a beginner, it's not a bad idea to try to solidify your territory by playing such a move. Okay, let's have white play. Uh, okay, white's already played in this corner. We'll have white play in this corner as well. Okay, so now black is going to, uh, let's say, uh, come back over here and let's have a, another look uh, at uh, responses um, to this approach move, a little bit different from what we've um, discussed before. So a, a, a third possibility, so we've already looked at, at white perhaps enclosing the, the corner by playing here or by moving towards the side with one of these moves. Another very uh, common play is to play somewhere uh, over here, okay? To play somewhere over here to pincer black and to prevent black from making an easy extension over here. Now, there's a whole bunch of different pincers and they are all slightly different, but the idea is, is roughly the same. Um, so let, let's say that white uh, pincers here. <clears throat> now, black has more or less two, I guess maybe three uh, different options. One is to just run out with a one point jump. Okay, this is perhaps the first thing that should come to your mind when someone pincers you. I just need to jump out towards the center so that I'm not surrounded. Okay, that's a really great uh, strategy to have as a beginner. Okay, you do not want to get surrounded, you want to maintain connection to the uh, outside. You might say, well, wait a minute, this is not making any territory. Yes, that's true, not directly. But in, in Go, territory is often secondary to the safety of your groups. Okay, First, you think about the safety of your groups, establishing good shape for your groups, and then hopefully afterwards the territory will come naturally. If you're focused too much on territory and neglect the proper shape and security of your groups, you're going to have groups killed and you're going to lose the game for that reason, not because you didn't get enough territory. Okay, so if black 
jumps out here, then white is more or less obliged to also jump towards the side because white does not want black to play here. Okay, and This would be black's preferred move. If white went somewhere else, then black would play here, and this would be great. That would enclose white. Now white would have to struggle to, to, to make some kind of, uh, you know, shape it in the uh, in, in the corner and um, you know, and, and it's, he's going to end up with four or five points of territory and black is going to be able to make this really thick wall that will have um, major influence throughout the entire game okay so white does not want this to happen so when black jumps out here white is also going to jump out and the two options are more or less uh, this play here this two point jump okay which is reasonable um, or in this case probably uh, this is uh, looks like a nice move it's a little bit more uh, tighter doesn't have so many weak spots and it it looks to make a, a bigger territory it also applies more pressure on black okay because now black is, is a little bit worried about white coming here and, and perhaps surrounding yeah okay so there's various things that um, that black could do. Black could actually push out here, in which case white could go here. And then black might even think about pincering this white stone or maybe capping it and, and uh, concentrating on the center. So either one of these um, basic strategies would be all right. Black would be thinking about maintaining communication with the center, uh, with this group, not allowing it to be cut off, but also applying some pressure on this stone. So if you're a beginner, this is a, a nice move to play. This is a very nice shape move. It, it works well with these stones, sort of supports them. Um, it applies pressure to this white stone. Now this white stone has to make a base or try to run out. And it's maybe looking towards some future central territory for black. All right, good. So that was one option for, for black. Another option after this white pincer is to make a base in the corner. Suppose black does not want to run out. Perhaps perhaps there's some danger. Perhaps there's already a well-established white position here. And this running group would sort of bump into this white wall and then not be able to go anywhere. In that case, that black group might actually come under some serious danger. So in that case, it might be better for black to play conservatively and to try to establish a base for two eyes sort of right off the bat. And usually the, the way to do that is to move into the corner because the corner is the place where it's easiest to make two eyes because you have these two walls of the board, uh, you know, that, that help you to enclose things. So in this case here, this attachment at the 3-3 three, three point is Black's way of uh, establishing or trying to make um, uh, um, an eye position. Okay, white is almost invariably going to go here because uh, white does not want to make it easy for a black to uh, settle themselves. And now we get uh, something that's a little bit complicated. Black will typically play here. And now white has uh, uh, a choice of uh, sort of peaceful response or, or less peaceful. So the peaceful response is to, to go out here and, and to, to move towards here. And if black plays somewhere else, then white can Atari this stone. That's a, a nice thing for white to do because then, first of all, it threatens um, to, uh, to capture the stone. So, for example, suppose black plays here, so then white will, will immediately play here. And this uh, Atari on this black stone, if black connects, then this is a, a really awkward, um, horrible shape for black, okay? It, it's, it's a big lump of stones that's just waiting to be attacked. So white would love this, okay? Um, because then white could attack these uh, these stones. And, uh, you know, and so, so maybe white could play something like this and, and looking to surround these stones on a, on a, on a big scale. And even if white... Uh, doesn't kill it and it manages to run out, it's probably not going to create or generate any territory for black while the surrounding white stones uh, will do so. So this is definitely something that black wants to avoid. So black is not going to play there. Uh, if white plays here, black is going to play here preventing this Atari and you can see this sort of an eye forming here, isn't there? 
Now white might make an extension like this. And now, in fact, uh, this black group, while not entirely uh, alive, has sufficient shape that black could conceivably play elsewhere. Okay, Because black has sort of two uh, ways of trying to make life. If, if white, um, whoops, if white, uh, white's just playing here. Suppose that black plays over here. Um, if white attacks this this group by restricting the uh, the black group in this direction, black can then play here like this. And now um, he's threatening to take this, so white wants to prevent him from making life. White has to protect that stone. And now if black really, really wants to make life, uh, black can go like this. And there's going to be an eye here, and, and there's more or less an eye here. So even if white plays here, um, black can play here like this, and this um, this is uh, two eyes. So this would be safe even if black is not able to run out and, and connect to something else. Okay, so that's <clears throat> that's why this, this is a rather flexible shape. On the other hand, if white played over here, which is also a very big territorial move, it also forces black to do something because now there's really only sort of one eye. So, so black could, for example, go, go like this, and that's then establishing something of a base on this side. So you see the, these two moves, this one right here and, and this one here, are sort of uh, in balance. If white plays one of them, black will play the other. And this ensures that black has uh, a base, and sort of no matter what, more or less. Okay, And because there's these two ways of playing, white is not in any hurry to, um, to play either one of them. White will tend to let this sit and make a decision later on. Later on, it might be that White is, is much more interested in playing this because maybe this group here is threatened. I mean, maybe if, if black, for example, ends up with a strong position over here, then white does not want black to come here and, and, uh, and limit his eye space. So this might be a, a good move. On the other hand, if white ends up with a strong you know, position up, up here, then this move here might be um, better in sync with, with, with a, a, a central position. And so white might be happy to play here and let black play here. Okay. So these are the kinds of considerations uh, that are uh, behind um, uh, Joseki. Okay, I'm just going to wrap up. Let's have one more example of a pincer. Here, um, it's White's turn. Okay, so we can let's uh, pincer uh, this thing here. So here's the same pattern. There's a 3-4 point on White. There's an approach move. And now we're going to look at this pincer, which uh, is it's a very popular uh, pincer. So there's you know, many things that black can do, but I'm just going to show you a, a relatively simple one, which is just to play this diagonal move, the same kind of thing that we saw over here, allowing black to, to have access to the center. And it's also a tight move, so there's a possibility of making eyes uh, on, on the side or in the corner. So suppose, for example, that, that white plays over here. Then the usual uh, response is for black to play here. So this then uh, establishes something of a base for black. It also happens to limit the uh, space of, of these uh, two white stones. And, um, and this is often the end of the pattern. Now in this case here, white would be a little bit nervous about these two stones. Um, and because of this strong black position here, um, and so so white would, would be looking to uh, to let's say uh, to strengthen these stones, and, and if white wanted to do that, one way of doing that would be to attach here. Uh, then black could play here, and white could play here, and then black could play here, and white could play here, and this little exchange, okay has strengthened both parties. And so now black has more of a, a clear eye space and white has also some, some more territory. Maybe black might even respond by playing here, threatening to, to slide in here and, and sort of reduce white's territory. White might be tempted to, to block that, okay? And so that a position um, might be finished. However, um, later on, or maybe actually even uh, sooner, white might also want to play here. If white plays here, then that's restricting the, the space for this group. Then black has to start worrying about this group. 
So to prevent that after this move, I think it would be natural actually for black maybe to play here. And then maybe black, white would respond there. And then black could pull back and maybe white would connect. Okay, so white gets a solid position on this side, but now black is quite secure. So this, this is now a very safe um, uh, group and black no longer has to worry about it. Okay, so these are some examples of opening plays that come about by starting with a 3-4 point and a low approach move on the opponent's part.